Then when you come to 7, so what will the range between do and what will rows between do? There is a difference. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. This channel, Aware Science, is all about trying to learn various concepts of the science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, we are going to solve this question on lead code regarding fine cumulative summary of an employee. The difficulty level of this question is hard and I'm going to share the SQL schema as well as the Panda schema in the description box below. Okay, the question reads, we are given a table called employee with three different columns, ID, month and salary. ID month is the primary key that is combination of columns with unique values for this table. Each row in this table indicates the salary of an employee in one month during the year 2020. We are asked to write a solution to calculate the cumulative salary summary for every employee in a single unified table. The cumulative salary summary for an employee can be calculated as follows. For each month that the employee worked, sum up the salaries in that month and the previous two months. This is their three months sum for that month. If an employee did not work for the company in previous months, their effective salary for those months is zero. Do not include the three months sum for the most recent month that the employee worked for in the summary. Do not include the three months sum for any month the employee did not work. Return the result table ordered by ID in ascending order. In case of a tie, order it by month in descending order. Okay. Let's go through this example. So here, for example, if we look at ID equal to one, right? So there is one employee ID one. So you have month first, second, third, fourth, seventh, and eighth. So if we look at ID one, month one, what is the cumulative salary? 20, and there is nothing bef before this, so 20. What is the cumulative salary of two, month two? 30 plus 20, that is 50. Month three, 40 plus 30 plus 20, that is 90. And then for month four, 60 plus 40 that is 100 and then 30 that is 130 and then if we look at id equal to 7 so 7 should be 90 and for month 6 and 5 the person did not work so it should be 90 plus 0 plus 0 and since the final this particular employee worked was 8 it should not be in the output so that is what we have and we can calculate that for other ids as well so to solve this question what we basically need to do is we need to since this question says the current month and the previous two months so here you have to specify windows now for windows you can specify windows either using the rows between clause or the range between clause and which one is the correct one here let us learn about that firstly let's make sure that we rank for every id which is the latest month so that we can exclude that how can we do that is from this table called employee let us you know let's keep all the columns as it is and then rank so let's assign a row number and then over partition by the id column order by the month column in descending manner right so that the latest one is assigned rank one as rank let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our okay so if we look at this, right, so for every ID, that is for every employee, the highest or the latest month is assigned rank one. We need to make sure that we don't include that. So what we can do is let us, you know, keep this in a common table expression. So with CTE as this entire thing goes into parentheses. And then from this common table expression, keep only those rows where your rank is not equal to one so do not keep the latest one and now what we want is we want the id the month and the cumulative salary of current and two months before so let us return the id let us return the month and then we want the sum of the salary right because we want cumulative salary now we, here we need to use for every employee right so partition by the id column and then order by the month column in ascending order right because we want that okay for id 1 right 20 plus previous two for id 1 month 2 30 plus 20 plus previous one right and so on that is why you need to order and then here we need to use the range between clause now let me show you how range between is going to exactly tackle this situation let me you know for example for id equal to one 
have all the data that we have in this example. Okay, so this is what you have for ID equal to one, right? So month one, two, three, four, and seven, and eight. Why do we not have that? Because we kept that the latest month is not included. Now, here, how the range between is going to work. So when you write range between, right? So let me just write it here. So if you write range between two preceding and current row, so what is this going to do? It is going to define you the window that, hey, when your cursor is here, current row is this and two preceding before this is nothing. So you will sum the salary column to 20. Now it, the cursor goes here. Now current row plus two preceding. So you have one and then one before. But what is range between looking at? So here you have ordered by the month column, right? So it is looking, okay, current row month is two. So two before should be one and zero. So month equal to zero does not make any sense. So that means you only need this one. Now here current row ordered by the month, month is three. So what is the two preceding before this month is two and one. So that means you sum this up. Now when you go to four, so four, three and two, then when you come to seven, so what will the range between do and what will rows between do? There is a difference. So when you come to seven, the range between is knowing that, okay, since you ordered by the month in ascending order, before seven, the month six and five should come. And since you do not have six and five, it is automatically assuming that it is zero. So that is why the sum for month seven is going to be 90 plus zero plus zero. Once you use range between, however, if you use rows between, it just simply looks at the order of the row. So here it will like, okay, this is current row, two before this. It does not matter two rows between, what is the value in the column that you are ordering by, etc. Right? I will show you, just demonstrate it here. Right? So let us alias this as whatever is required in our output. So as salary, let me go ahead and run this and let's see what do we get in our output. Right? So here, if you look at our output, you had 120, then 20 plus 30, then 20 plus 30 plus 40, 90, right? And then 130. And then here for seven, you have 90 plus zero plus zero, right? So you see the range between is taking care of it. But if I go ahead and change range to row, it is going to have a different value in this part, right? Let me just show you that. So if I go and do this rows between thing, right? It is going to have 17, 190, right? So, so why do we have 190 here? Let me bring that thing back, right? So if I just remove this, this is what we had, right? So here it will say, okay, 90 plus 60 is 150 plus 40, 190. And that is why rows between only looks at the order of the rows, whereas range between looks at the exact value in the column you are ordering by, right? So that is why range between works in this case. So range between and we also need to order this by ID in ascending order and month in descending order. So order by ID in ascending and month in descending order. Let me just remove this part. Okay, so let me go ahead and run this. Let's see what do we get in our output. So yeah, this is accepted. Our output is same as expected output. Let me go ahead and submit to pass all the test cases. So yeah, this is accepted and this is how to do it. So yes, very tricky question. What we basically had to do was, firstly, we kept only those rows where the last month or the latest month of every ID is not included, right? That is how we achieved this. And once we had that, then what we use is we define the windows by using range between. And we learned that when you use range between, the column that you're ordering by the value matters in that case, right? So that is why it is taking care of what we have in our question that do not include the three month sum for any month the employee did not work. So yeah, this is how we do it. Let me know if there is a better, more efficient solution to solve this question. Let the solution be in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next video.